Left of the box. Put your hand up if you know what I mean by when I say grassy narrows. Who in the sandbox has heard of Grassy Narrows First Nation? So Grassy Narrows First Nation sues Ontario, Canada over mercury uh, contamination. So this has been going on for a while. And when I say a while, I mean over 50 years. That is how long this has been going on. Partly because the federal and the provincial government are fighting over who needs to clean this up. Ah, Angela W. has heard of Grassy Narrows. Got another hand raised, okay. I have a good sandbox. Yeah, so Toronto, a Northern Ontario First Nation that has been plagued by mercury poisoning for decades this Tuesday is soothing the governments of Can Ontario and Canada over mercury contamination in a river system that thro flows through its territory. Grassy Narrows First Nation alleges the government breached their obligations by failing to ensure the community could safely practice its right to fish. The lawsuit are alleges the government first allowed English uh, Wab the GNU river system to be contaminated then failed to uh, remediate it all while authorizing indus industrial activities that worsened the harm. Mercury is harmful to humans who eat contaminated fish and the people of Grassy Narrows fish to eat earn a li livelihood and maintain their way of life according to the statement of claim. Speaking on the steps of downtown Toronto Courthouse Tuesday, Grassy Narrows Chief Rudy Turtle said he believed the issue would have been handled very differently if it had affected a different region and population. Oh yeah. Again, what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that when it comes to uh, infrastructure on, res on um, reservations, uh, healthcare for indigenous peoples, all that sort of stuff, it's federally run. And so when you have something that's kind of wish-washy as to, well, this is normally something that falls under provincial, um, the provincial umbrella on what to look after. And so then they just get into these massive arguments over who should be forced to pay for, or sh who should have to pay for this. And it actually led to something, uh, was it Nathaniel's Law? Oh, I know this. I do know it. Um... Oh, it's so great and bug me. If you know in the sandbox, let me know. Um, basically, it was put in place after a child, um, an indigenous child, was severely ill and needed help. But the federal government and the provincial government start arguing over who should pay for this child's health care. And uh, the child ended up dying before... He got the health care he needed. This law was put in place so that it says that no matter what, the child will be treated first and they'll argue over who pays for it later. So still pretty bad. Oh, it's so great and bug me because I actually do know the name of this because I've been wanting to mention it before. So we're not looked at as important because there's very few of us, he said of the community of which roughly a thousand members live on reserve. It has come to a point where legal action is necessary, he added. We are doing this for our children, our grandchildren. There's a new generation of young people that are being born every day and they are born into contaminated river, contaminated fish, the chief says. Sorry, just checking to see if anyone caught it yet. The lawsuit is seeking, among other things, in order that the government uh, remediate and protect the river of Grassy Narrows territory and prohibit the authorization of industrial land. And, and so basically, yeah, this is um, the group taking, having to take the governments now to court over this because the provincial government, the federal government is refusing to clean this for the lives of these people, this contaminated water. Uh, but let's get a little bit more actually into the history. But first, I, I thought this was... So Nikki Ashton, wonderful uh, MP, NDP MP, solidarity with Grassy Narrows. Shameful that Canada is once again leaving First Nations like Grassy Narrows. Uh, no choice but to take them to court because they have reneged on their promises. Sorry, I just find this interesting. It's the Toronto Star. They had to put a picture because if you read too many Toronto Star articles online, you get blocked. And so it's like, well, I'll just take a picture of the paper instead. 
That's the Toronto Star for you. Yeah, I try to avoid articles from the Toronto Star because you're only allowed so many per month and that's not very many. But here's how I first found out about it was through Amnesty International. Jordan's principal. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> that is exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, I am going to actually pop it up on screen. Angela wins. Okay, so um, Jordan's principal is free to access. There is no fee for First Nations children to access Jordan principal. Regional uh, focal points and services coordinates. And blah, blah, blah. Um, Jordan's principles make sure all First Nation children living in Canada can access the products, services, and supports they need when they need them. Funding can help with a wide range of health, social, and educational needs, including the unique needs of the First Nation, Two-Spirit, and LGBTQQIA children and youth that and those with disabilities have. Jordan's principles name in memory of Jordan River Anderson. He was a young boy from uh, Norway House Cree Nation in Manitoba. Uh, requests for Inuit children can be made through Inuit Child First Initiative. Uh, Jordan's principle was established by First Nations in response to the death of five-year-old uh, Jordan River Anderson, a child from uh, the Norway House Cree Nation who suffered from uh, Kerry Feynman Zitter syndrome, a rare muscular disorder that required years of medical treatment in a Winnipeg hospital. After spending the first two years of his life in a hospital, doctors cleared Jordan to live in a family home near the hospital in Winnipeg. However, the federal and provincial governments could not resolve who was financially responsible for the necessary home care. For over two years, the government of Canada and Manitoba provincial governments continued to argue while well, Jordan remained in the hospital in 2005 at the age of five, Jordan died in hospital. He never had the opportunity to live in a family home. And so, yeah, it's just tragic, tragic uh, story. So this was how I first heard about the Grassy Narrows uh, area was because I volunteered with Amnesty International. And this here is from 2019. So Amnesty has been pushing for this for a while. Mercury crisis at Grassy Narrows requires decisive federal action, not more empty promises. In an open letter, Amnesty International Canada, the Council of Canadians, and CUPE Ontario are urging Indigenous Service Minister uh, Seamus O'Regan to use his visit to Grassy Narrows tomorrow to make good on his government's promise to provide long-needed health services to a community devastated by half a century of mercury poisoning. More than two years ago, in January 2017, the Prime Minister's office said that the Trudeau government would deal with the mercury crisis at Grassy Narrows once and for all. Hmm. Uh, funny how Justin Trudeau has a habit of making all these promises for Indigenous peoples and then totally not doing any of them. He's good on queer-related issues. Horrible when it comes to indigenous issues. Absolutely horrible. Uh, in November 2017, the federal government promised to build and operate a care home and treatment facility for mercury survivors in Grassy Narrows. More than 500 days later, only 1% of the promised money had been spent to build the faculty. The grounds has not been broken and the chief and council of Grassy Narrows reports the project is still at a standstill. The open letter supports the Grassy Narrows First Nation call for funds for the care home and treatment center. And this is uh, also known as Grassy Narrows. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. I am not going to be able to pronounce that. Although I have learned that quite often it is very phonically spelt out. So as sub p peace chico si wagon first nation also known as grassy narrows and so the wikipedia page on it generations of um, grassy lakes continue to suffer from physical social and economics cause of the discharge of approximately 10 tons of mercury into uh the wabagan New River between 1962 and 1970 by the Dryden Pulp and Paper Mill. A hundred kilometers upstream of Grassy Narrows, poisoning water and the fish and the staple food of the Grassy Narrows First Nation. The community was under a long-term 
drinking water advisory from 2013 to 2020 when it was lifted in the spring of 2020 the federal government reached an agreement with grassy narrows to build a 20 million clinic for those suffering with mercury poisoning yeah i don't think that's happened i don't think that has actually happened <laughs>